Hello everybody, this is Megaping9001 here, welcoming you all to the first edition of uh, MKS Mondays. So, this program is going to be designed to provide, well, first off, as you've read the title, this is Behind the Cutscenes. Since Demo 3 just came out, I'm going to be going over a few of the features I programmed in. Cutscenes is one of the big ones I didn't really highlight during the reveal trailer because I wanted to keep it a surprise. Uh, other MKS Mondays will probably have more interesting things, like I plan on revealing a few new features this way, something that might not be big enough to get its own trailer, should be still be cool to see nonetheless. Let me tell you something about cutscenes. This is something I've wanted in the game for a very long time. If anyone who's worked in Clicktoon has ever told you anything, it's probably that working with the camera in this program is a bit of a pain. There's no built-in zoom in or out function. That's why even though you have great games like Freedom Planet or Spark the Electric Jester made in here, you notice most of them never have the camera zoom in or out. It's usually always kept at the same fixed position. But if you take a look at this... camera actually zooms in and out with the frame, which is kind of amazing. So we had to get an extension for this called Viewport, and yeah, that ended up being really, really good. I actually tried implementing this a few years ago, but I had no idea what to do. So instead, I actually got help from, you guess who, WWWWario because he was able to use Viewpoint in a different manner, but from his work, I was able to decipher it. So in a way, you could consider cutscenes his first, like, huge contribution to Mushroom Kingdom Showdown 2, well, you know, besides the entire game. Okay, so if we look at events, so every single cutscene is laid out as its own individual event as a group. So it's played when you unlock a character, that cutscene will activate. I couldn't do the start of frame event, because I realized in activating these frames, it wouldn't have enough time to do it since it'd be inactive from the start. So that's why I have this timers greater than zero, zero. This is a cutscene I'm going to add in later, where it plays in classic mode when Mario encounters Bowser. So... Oh. Well, let me just activate it temporarily. Okay. Yeah. I've always liked the idea of rival battles in fighting games, so this is something I'm hoping to introduce later down in the line, so... Let's take a look at what I got so far. And it is broken. Okay, so you guys are actually gonna watch me do some programming today. So another thing I realized is that if I wanted these events to all play properly, I need to make a fade-in screen so everything would have the proper time to get set up. So what I need to do is copy this event I have in other cutscenes, and this is going to let the screen fade back out from black. So if I paste this in here, I think this should work now. And it is still not working the way I want. So, I guess this is going to double as a programming thing for you guys. Lucky you. Let's see. So Mario is here, but is, this, is he created at the start of the thing? No, he's not. So let's do that. Still not working the way I want it to. <laughs> okay, let's try once again. Let's see. Timer equals seven seconds. Let's do it at three fifteen, three ninety. So these are the x coordinates of the thing. So I'm going to do timers 
greater than 1, a timer is also less than something else. So let's try 7 seconds. So that's going to play when you fight Bowser in classic mode in the final version of the game. And I want to have something like that for every character. So, I guess today you also got to see me bug fix a cutscene, so you get some insight into how game development works down here. Yeah, it's about more cutscenes in general. So I was inspired by Super Smash Bros. Brawl, where it's commonly known that the last three fighters, which would be Jigglypuff, Toon Link, and Wolf, were not intended to be in the final game. Because of that, they had to be incorporated into story mode, like, in the post-game. But they still made cutscenes for them. And each cutscene served as a little showcase of each character's personality. So that's something I wanted to try to do. So, okay. Let's try doing... Whoops. So let's try doing this. Yeah, so, after 5 seconds in the actual game, it'd fade to Diddy's, like, unlock event, but you saw there, something I wanted was to fit the music going on, I just wanted Diddy to be taking a little walk, and he just does the little hat flip to show, yeah, he's a fun guy. So, with games like these, you can't have dialogue, so it's all based around character acting, so that's something I want to try to do for all these cutscenes. Yeah, I've always been a huge fan of films. I watch a lot. Some people tell you I watch a lot of anime movies, which is true, but I appreciate traditional films too. So, and the opportunities to make these types of scenes has been really, really enjoyable. I hope to keep making more in the future. Is there anything else I wanted to say? You can tell this is very improvised. None of this is scripted in the slightest, as you can see by all my bug fixing and stuff. So, yeah. I hope to continue making more of these in the future, and I hope you're able to enjoy this little insight, and you also get to catch a bit of unscripted mega, so... Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm the lead programmer of Mushroom Kingdom Showdown 2. I put a lot of work into this, and with the virus going around, I hope I'm able to bring some happiness to your guys' lives. I found out someone played my game for 5 hours, well not my game, but our team's game for 5 hours, and... That just feels nice, like, I was able to bring someone that much free time. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Later.